Welcome to this episode of Real Chemistry. I'm Dr. Moritz. Today we're going to be talking about formal charges. What's a formal charge? Well, basically, in our Lewis structures, if an atom has extra bonds, more bonds than it wants, or less bonds than it wants, it gets what's called a formal charge. That is, a non-zero charge. So if we look at ozone, we'll notice that there's three oxygens. Oxygens typically want two bonds. And this one has, in fact, two bonds. And so it has a formal charge of zero. It has exactly the number of bonds at once. It has exactly the number of electrons around it that it should. On the other hand, this oxygen has three bonds. That's an extra bond. And that means it's sharing more of its electrons and it gets a positive formal charge. This last oxygen has one fewer bond than it would like, just one bond. And that means it's sharing less of its electrons than it would like. And that gives it a little bit of a negative charge. So though ozone on the whole is neutral because there's a positive one and a negative one, if you look carefully at each oxygen, some of them are more positive and some of them are more negative. And these are called formal charges. The more non-zero formal charges you have, the less stable the molecule. Let me say that again. The more charges you have that are not zero, the less stable your molecule is. So if you get a plus two formal charge, that's pretty unstable. Zero formal charges are stable. That's the number of bonds the atoms want to share. What we're gonna do in this video is show you how to calculate formal charge quickly just by looking at the number of bonds. So let's do this for carbon monoxide. So for carbon monoxide, this is the correct Lewis structure. And we'll look down here at these steps. We note that we want to figure out how many bonds are typical for each atom. You can do this with the periodic table, uh, but carbon wants four bonds and oxygen wants two bonds. So if carbon wants four bonds, you'll notice in this Lewis structure, it has three. And for each missing bond, that gives us a minus one formal charge. So since carbon is sharing less of its electrons than it wants to, it has a negative one formal charge. On the other hand, oxygen, which wants two bonds, has three. So that gives it a plus one formal charge. It's sharing more of its electrons than it wants to. So this way we can really quickly just look at how many bonds each thing has and compare it to how many uh, bonds the atom wants, right? Oxygen wants two, it has three, that gives it a plus one charge. Carbon has three, it wants four, that gives it a minus one charge. Let's do another example. Here we have NH4, and I'll quickly draw the Lewis structure, which looks like this. Now, Nitrogen turns out to want three bonds in hydrogen one. If I look at this, each of my hydrogens has one, and that means the formal charge of all the hydrogens in this molecule are zero, which is the most stable formal charge you can have. On the other hand, nitrogen, once three bonds, has four. And since there is an extra bond, that gives us a plus one formal charge, plus one. So our nitrogen has a plus one formal charge, and that actually explains why our molecule overall is plus one. We've added a hydrogen onto our NH3, and hydrogens by themselves, protons are positive, and so we have a plus one overall charge, and you can see that with the formal charges. All right, one more molecule. H3O+, plus, which is called hydronium. This is what's responsible for uh, making something acidic. So normally we have water like this, and with hydronium, basically, we're just tacking on a hydrogen onto the oxygen. Once again, we note that oxygen wants two bonds and hydrogen wants one bond. Each of my hydrogens has a formal charge of zero because it has exactly one bond. Oxygen, on the other hand, has an extra bond. It's sharing more of its electrons than it wants, and so it has a plus one formal charge. So there you have it. That's the really easy, fast way to calculate formal charges. There's tons more to know about formal charges, and you can take a look at some other videos to understand that in more depth, but this is a really good, fast way to calculate what the formal charge is of a molecule. Thank you for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Let me know if you got any questions.